So in today's video we're going to take a look at painting the roof on this mini and also the prep work on the bodywork on the rest of the shell. I'll give you guys a bit of a run through of what we're going to use on the rest of it. So the roof's going black and we're using 2K Direct Gloss for this. I'm using the Welcome Carbonial 360, it's got the MP air cap on it and it's got the 1.2 setup on it. So this roof was a little bit more than bad shall we say. Um, it was absolutely hammered from like the center all the way to the front. Um, I spent probably, I don't know, maybe three days trying to get this roof back flat. Now because the customer isn't looking for a concourse car, it wasn't a case of replacing the roof. Um, if it was going to be a concourse job then you'd have no choice really but to replace the roof. So it's not like a thousand percent this roof it's not a hundred percent perfect when it's finished it has got a wobble in it but the customer is aware of this he's quite happy with that he wants a car that you can drive rather than you know something that's concourse and that you're going to be scared to take out on the road <clears throat> sort of as a daily sort of everyday sort of car that you can use so we've done the best we can on it but it's just got to a case of like we can't really put any more time into this roof because it's had so much time just on this roof it's getting a little bit ridiculous and it's just to try and get it as best that we can now there is one wobble that i'm not quite happy with which i may or may not sort of redo the roof for um i might there's just one wobble that i'm not quite happy with which i might sort out um and then just maybe flash the roof over again i'm not quite 100 percent sure yet but i'll work that out a little bit further down the job if it bugs me enough that the rest of the car is that straight then this last wobble in the roof that didn't quite come out before paint um, then i might just have to address that just for my own sort of peace of mind now the first thing that i'm doing um, which is an awkward area on these minis and on a lot of cars like this um, is the gutter rail so i'm just angling my gun to the outside of the car just trying to shoot a really thick heavy coat inside that gutter rail to try and make sure that that's sealed up and that's fully coated because as we're going around the rest of the car the chances of you getting inside that gutter rail especially once you've wet these sides of this roof up are going to be pretty slim and it's a hard area to catch so i'm just making sure and taking my time first that i've got this fully colored up and i've got plenty of paint in there to seal everything up before i start now you will notice that i am painting the roof a little bit too far so I'm painting part of the outer rail as well. Now, when we paint the body, we'll just back mask off to the edge of this roof rail and obviously re-prep that tiny little section along the edge of this roof gutter. <clears throat> now, you'll notice that I put a piece of paper on the wall. I was just trying to check that all my gun setup was right before I started shooting this roof. Because although it's a nice big flat roof, it does have these quite steep sides on it. So you can load the roof up quite nice and quite wet. But on these sides, you just have to be that little bit more careful because they are sort of very vertical. So the tiniest little bit too much of a build up on there. And it's quite easy to get a run on one of these roofs on them areas. Now I'm running this at two bar. I'm running around about two and a half turns out. And I'm running, um, I'd say probably about one turn in on the fan. Not a lot. Just to tighten it up that tiny little bit. Um, this first coat um, I did actually find because it was quite a cold day that the paint was a little bit thicker than I'd liked so I did go out between the first coat and the second coat just add a touch of extra reducer in there and just just to help it flow out a little bit more and so we could wet it up that little bit further on the next coat now for you guys that follow me on Instagram will have seen the pictures of this before and after on this roof and it is like a thousand times better than it was this roof it was absolutely trashed it looked like a team of rugby players have been tap dancing on it in high heels. It was absolutely horrendous. Um, so overall, I was happy with the way that it came out, especially with it being black. It's probably one of the worst colours to actually want, you know, such a badly damaged roof in. But it's, you know, it's what the customer wants, so that's what we're going to give them. Hence why I think I might just have to sort out the wobble on the other side of the roof, because it's got a little just a tiny bit of sharpness to it which i don't really understand because i've been over this roof about 10 times with a block um but it's just one of them little things and it's just it's just niggling away at me that little bit so it might just be one of them little bits that i might have to just sort out before this car goes out because the customer might not mind but it's going to absolutely pet my head 
But you can see is, as I'm moving side to side, there is a slight wobble to this roof. Now, I've got to be honest, outside, um, you're not really going to notice all that much. In the boob, it's obviously very prominent because of this very straight bars of the light from the spray boob. But I don't think outside you'd notice it quite as much. But you probably will see the little harsh spot that was on about um, when I'm putting this second coat on. And someone actually mentioned on the comments on Instagram the other day that it was quite mad that I actually mentioned that this roof wasn't 100%. But I'm not here to blag anybody off. You know, I'm not quite happy with this roof. Um, I'm sure, to be fair, the customer would be more than happy with it for how bad it was. But there's always that sort of time that, no, you know, no matter how many cars you do, no matter how good you are, that you just, there's always that little one bit that sometimes you're just not quite happy with. And this is just one of them cases. So, in between the, f the first coat and this coat, I have just been out and put a little bit of extra reducer in this black. Um, I added about another 5% maybe, because um, it was quite a cold day. Although the, bo although the booth was warm, um, it was first thing in the morning, so the paint in the back was quite cool. Um, so it's a little bit thicker than I'd liked. And you can just see there with the spray gun that it's just atomizing that a little bit nicer. And I've taken it out now to about three turns out on the fluid just to really wet this top section up. Now you'll notice again when I go around the sides of the roof, I'm just being careful, just taking my time with where I'm laying the paint to make sure that I don't build up the sides of the roof, you know, like an excessive amount because I don't want, you know, to get a big run or a big hanger in the side of that edge. And it's a, one of them sort of edges that it's a really easy place that you could get a run. Now, overall, Finish wise and everything, this came out really nice. Um, this gun does perform extremely well, um, whether it be with clear or with gloss. Um, I've not had any issues with it as far as lay down and stuff goes. Um, it does what it says on the tin, I guess. Um, it is a very, very good spray gun. Um, I will leave a link in the description as well to this spray gun from our sponsors at SP Supplies. Um, I don't think they've got the MP version in, um, but Personally, I don't think there's a massive difference in the laydown between the MP and the 360 Carbonio, the standard one. Um, I think you can get as nice of a finish with either. And obviously, on a big flat panel like this, it's not really going to matter too much what spray gun you use because you can load it up really wet and get that really nice sort of glassed up finish. Now, after I'd finished this second coat, I just went across and gave it another sort of half coat just to kind of try and wet it up that touch more because that first coat was a little bit thick but as you can tell you know by that as I'm actually going over it it is nice you know it's nice and flat and you could just notice that little wobble there um, towards the center of the roof and that one little wobble there is absolutely bugging me so I probably will flip this roof over again um, after I've just sorted out that wobble which is a bit of a shame because I've put a lot of hours into this roof so far but you know, it is one of them things, um, I didn't notice it too much on the day, but you can just see it there, it's just bugging me that wobble is, um, so I'm just going to have to sort that little spot out, I think, um, before this car goes out. Now, as far as the actual <coughs> prep side goes on this car, I'm not going to run through the whole prep on it, we're just going to look at um, like one section on the wing and run you guys through what I'm using and how I'm going to go about the prep on this. Now obviously there are different ways of prepping stuff depending on whether it's a direct gloss or it's solid colour or metallic. So we'll go through this and this is going to be done in a solid colour. Okay, so that's the roof all done. That's all in gloss now. So it's time now to take a bit of a look at the paint prep for the body of the Mini itself. So quickly what I'll run through is what we're going to be using. So for the initial blocking stage, we're going to be using the Merca 240 Abronettes. So we're going to be using Abronettes to start off with. Um, using 240, it's got a nice cut, but it's not too harsh. We're obviously, everything's got guide coat, so everything's been dry guide coated. Now, you can use like a rattle can sat in black if you want. Just have to be a little bit gentle and just put a very light coat on. We've also got, same again, a selection of blocks like we used in the very first stage. We've got some P400 hand pads that we're going to use for like inside the door shut areas and inside the little gaps. And obviously, 
especially on these minis, you've got all these sort of curved areas that we need to get around. So they're gonna be really handy for that. And then to finish off, some of that I've been trying from Safer Products, um, and I'll leave a link in the description to these, is these like foam back sanding pads. So once we've two-footed it, we're gonna go around, re-guide coat it, and then finish up with those. Now, although these are called the SP2000, the grade on these is around about an 800 to 1000 when you've cut with it. So we're gonna go over the 240 and then we're gonna finish with those to finish it off. So I'll get you guys set up on the tripod and then we'll get going on part of this front end and give you guys a run through of what I'm gonna be doing and how we're gonna go about obviously the final paint prep on this mini. So we're starting off with a 240 on the small block. Now, the biggest thing is just to follow the curves of the car. So you notice that I'm going in a diagonal motion, so I'm getting to the length and the width of the car all at once, and I'm keeping the block moving. You don't want to try and scrub one spot, you want to try and keep it moving across the car in a nice even motion um, as you're moving around. Now the whole point of the guide coat, which someone asked actually in the last video is to show up the highs and lows so if there's obviously a lot of dark then that'll be quite a low spot um, if it rubs off quicker in one area then that could be a slight high spot it takes a little bit getting used to but what you're looking for is this consistent finish what you're not looking for is any of the guide coat to be left like along that edge so like that edge and obviously the front there by and the back needs a little bit more of a block now I'm using a variation of blocks, I'm using like the semi-rigid block at the moment because obviously with this car having quite a lot of curves you do need a block that will slightly flex to the panel but you want it to flex in a straight line if that makes sense. Um, I know that probably sounds a bit stupid but you want it to be a straight flex, you don't want it to be you know like a kinked flex so if you had like a soft foam block you could kink that, you want it to be a straight you know an even curve going across the panel um so these little polycarbonate blocks that we sort of made are absolutely ideal for that they've got a nice even flex across the length of them and for panels like this where they are very concave in every way um they're really good for getting around all those areas now we'll block everything up with a 240 first and i'm not like i said before i'm only going to block this wing so far then what we're going to do is we're gonna go around then and start tickling up the edges. Now, if you've got any like little black spots or anything that are left, which I will cut to a little shot to show you in a minute, then once you've two footed everything, you would wanna go around and address any of them little areas. Now you could use dolphin glaze or a 1K fine filler, something like that, um, or a 1K pinhole filler, as some people might call them, just to spot in those tiny little areas. So as you see now, we've been around, everything looks good all the edges are done everything's looking pretty sound and just down there you can see there's a little black dot now that little bit black dot would need just a tiny little bit of dolphin glaze or a bit of fine filler so I'd do that now before we move on to the finer grades now for the purpose of this video I'm not doing it um, because I'll be doing the whole front end as one section but what I'm going to do next um, after you've done all your bits of fine filler and 1k stopper would be go around all your edges so any of your curved <coughs> edges that obviously you can't do with the block um all these little gaps where the sealer would go and stuff like that and the panel edges themselves i go around those with a 400 soft pad that will just give a nice rounded edge to all those parts and obviously allow us to get in them last little tiny grooves and then little nitty gritty bits that you can't get a bigger block into the next step would be to re-guide coat the panel. Now, I know for some of you, you new guys, this might seem a bit strange, but we've cut this back with quite a harsh cut, being a P240. So what we need to do now is get rid of all these P240 scratches. Now, the easiest way to do that is to re-guide coat the panel, and you can see there, the diagonal moving across where those scratches are. Now, the beauty of this is the guide coat now has sunk into those scratches. So as I'm coming along now with that SP pad, and it's a nice soft foam pad, it's got a really good cut to it. So as I'm coming across that now, I can see those scratches in the guide coat disappearing. And as those are disappearing, then obviously I know I'm refining that back. I'm taking those 240 scratches out, 
and I'm effectively leaving, I'd say these pads are sort of around about, I would say about a six to 800 cut, somewhere around there. And then I'd go around the edges with a nice soft foam pad, the same grade again, just to go around and tickle up all those outer areas. And you can see as I'm going around, just how much that panel's cleaning up, all that guide coat's disappearing. We're getting all these last little niggly bits and then basically repeat that across the whole of the car, panel by panel, piece by piece. Now, what I would do if you're a bit more of a novice is do it section by section. So that's a little bit of an insight into how we're gonna go about prepping the body. So obviously I haven't done the whole front end. I've just done a little section there to show you guys uh, how we're gonna go about it. Now, if you look at this now, you can obviously, there's no sanding marks where that guide coat went on. So we know all them 240 scratches are out. Now, if you do have anything like this, little pinholes or anything at this stage, then you've obviously missed something along the way. So the way that I would go about this is I'd probably use this line. I'd do the whole front in the 240 and the, the 400 hand pads first. Then I'd do any of the pinholes I'd deal with the pinholes and then I'd go across them with the soft, like the soft sponge pads on the DA just to refine it that little bit more. Now, when you have got it to this stage and you think that you're happy, if you just want to triple check, a little tip for you guys that don't know is you can use some panel wipe in a spray bottle. Just take your spray bottle, wet your panel up, and then as you look at your panel then, you can get a really good idea of just how straight and just how flat the panel is because it gives it that wet up look like obviously it will be when it's glossed or cleared. So then you can give a last little visual check if you want just to make sure that where you've blocked, you're happy that everything's straight. You can see all these light bars are running really nice and straight across the whole length of the wing. And it just gives you that little extra bit that you can check as you're going through it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do obviously the rest of the car in this process. I'm gonna go around it section by section so I don't miss anything. And then in the next video, we'll probably be putting some paint on the shell and we'll probably get maybe the bonnet and the bump and probably the tailgate in as well when we do the shell and then do all the other bits separately. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Bye for now. Oh,